Arctic air ready to blast the bluegrass state and it's bringing snow into town. We'll put a track on it with the hour by hour forecast just ahead. A threatening message caused many people to stay away from the EKU campus today. What campus leaders are doing to keep everyone safe. A special salute from the Big Blue Nation to a Kentucky Marine who didn't let some horrible injuries stop his dreams. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 6. Good evening to you. Thanks for being here with us. We are about to receive a reminder that winter is far from over. An Arctic blast is expected to arrive tonight. And it could bring some snow with it. Just in time for the morning commute, we begin tonight early with our chief meteorologist, Chris Bailey. He's tracking the cold changes heading our way. What a change from today. Yeah, really. I mean, temperatures today flirting with 50 degrees in some areas. Tomorrow, we're going to be hard pressed to get out of the low 20s during the heart of the afternoon. In between, as you mentioned, Sam and Amber, some snow showers and squalls. Life first alert defender now. Arctic front is right on top of the Ohio River, working its way in from northwest to southeast. So the sunshine we had earlier, obviously going by by clear skies, going by by as well as a lot of cloud cover begins to pull on into town from northwest to southeast. Now, if you're looking for the real cold stuff, you got to get to Chicago and points to the northwest. So that gets into town as we go into tomorrow. It's more of a Tempered temperature drop over the next few hours coming our way. But what to expect into tomorrow morning? Snow showers, squalls will kick into high gear on a strong northwesterly wind flow around here. That's often the case when you can get some pretty hefty snow squalls. In between, you may even see a ray of sunshine, a flurry, another squall comes through there, kind of coats the ground a little bit. Some slick spots will likely develop on area roads first thing tomorrow morning. Now, if you're out and about this evening, you see that temperature drop showing up from north to south, mid 30s to around 30 with a few snowflakes. That will be possible. Guys, when I come back in less than 15 minutes, focus of the forecast will be on rounds of Arctic cold and snow squalls that show up in your seven day forecast. Chris, thank you. Workers with Lexington streets and roads say they'll be ready for any snow that comes. You may have noticed crews pre treating roads around the city today with salt brine, and they tell us they have enough salt on hand for snow. Streets and roads has crews coming in at midnight and then at 4 a.m. to cover any snow covered roads. Now to a breaking news alert we're tracking in Lexington tonight. Leaders of Dunbar High School say a student brought a gun and ammunition to campus today. The school alerted parents to the situation late this afternoon. Jordan Valines is tracking the investigation. She joins us live from Dunbar with the breaking details. Jordan? That's right. I spoke with several parents off camera. They told me they were shocked when they got an email this afternoon informing them that a student had brought a gun and ammunition into school. Now, school officials were tipped off by an unknown source about the location of the weapon. Just before school let out this afternoon, officials discovered the gun and the ammunition inside the student's backpack. We're told the gun was not loaded at the time. We've learned that the student has been arrested by Lexington police and charged with unlawful possession of a weapon on school property. The student is also facing serious administrative consequences through the school district, but officials haven't released what those consequences will entail. Now, at this point, the student's motive for bringing the weapon into school is unknown. Live in Lexington, Jordan Valines, WKYT. Jordan, thank you. A message threatening gun violence today left many people on the EKU campus feeling nervous. So in the last week, EKU police and university leaders have been working to make sure that everyone feels safe. But it appears many students and staff decided to avoid campus today. And EKU leaders say increased security on campus will continue for two big events there tonight. Sam Smith joins us now live with our top story at 6. Good evening, Sam. It's a big night on the EKU campus. You have the Alton Brown performance at the Center for the Arts and the basketball game against Moorhead State. University leaders say they're ready to keep everyone safe. We are now and will remain prepared to respond to any situation that faces our university community. Acting Executive Director of Public Safety Brian Mackinnon says from this morning to this evening, safety has been a top priority. That involves increased patrols by campus, city, and state police. Students that chose to go to class today have noticed. It definitely makes it feel safer. I feel more comfortable going to class with police presence everywhere. That presence continues tonight for the Alton Brown Show at the Center for the Arts and the basketball game at Alumni Coliseum. Uh, but we were at, just ask everyone to remain vigilant about their environment, but we ask that all of the time. 
uh, not just for special events such as what is going on tonight. It's all because of this message written on a bathroom stall in the Combs building, bringing gun to here to 1115 dead students. Investigators have received several leads on this case. I'm told they were all followed up on, but none have led to any arrests. Students I spoke with appreciate the measures the university has taken. You know, it's a little bit scary, but you know, I think that everything's being handled really well today. I'm told the increased police presence here on campus will continue into next week, and then they'll taper back to what's normal. Live from the EKU campus, Sam Smith, WKYT. EKU leaders encourage anyone on campus to take part in the campus alert program called RAVE. Yeah. We are tracking some disturbing accusations tonight against a Madison County man. Police say he used an electric cattle prod to punish two children. Richmond police charged 54 year old Silas Powell with criminal abuse. Police say last week he tortured and abused a seven year old girl and a 12 year old boy. Police arrested Powell this afternoon. The Fayette County Coroner's Office has officially identified a teenager killed in a crash earlier this week. The coroner says a forensic dentist confirmed the victim as 18 year old Maddie Jackson. She was a senior at Woodford County High School. Investigators say Jackson was killed in a three car crash on Versailles Road Monday. The coroner's office says funeral arrangements are pending, but Blackburn and Ward Funeral Home in Versailles are handling them. A lucky break today for a Lexington man who had his SUV stolen earlier this week. He said someone drove off with it on Monday while it was warming up along Laredo Drive. This morning, he spotted it while driving along New Circle in his other car. He says he followed the SUV to a parking lot along Fortune Drive where he blocked it with his car. Police say the man who was driving it implied he had a weapon in his pocket and took off. They haven't found him. The theft victim's friend told us he was just doing what he felt he had to do. He wasn't scared, but he, he wanted his own car. You know, he saw his own car, so he wanted to know why that guy is driving it. Uh -huh. Police said that the car may have been involved in at least two burglaries across Lexington the past couple of days. Police said the man who was driving it was a young black man, about five foot six, stocky build, was wearing a black and white hoodie. Hundreds of people gathered at the state capitol this afternoon to rally for a proposed statewide smoking ban. They're pushing for a vote on the bill that would ban smoking at all workplaces and public buildings. The bill has been filed in the legislature the last five years, but never got very far. Representative Susan Westrom of Lexington has sponsored the bill each time. She is confident the bill will receive a vote during this year's General Assembly. So much has changed over the last five years, but the difference from last year until this year of knowledge base that people all across the state have on secondhand smoke and the problems it can cause that they could no longer ignore. The bill has bipartisan support in the House, but Senate Majority Leader Damon Thayer has said there's not much Senate support to pass a smoking ban. He has dealt with incredible pain and life-changing injuries. Marine Corporal Matthew Bradford was badly injured eight years ago while serving in Iraq. But since then, the Kentucky native and UK fan has been inspiring others with his determination to live life to its fullest. New at 6 tonight, Lee K. Howard shows us how Bradford received a special salute on the floor of Rupp Arena. I remember, you know, the 98 when they did their tournament run. Matthew Bradford is like many Kentucky Wildcat fans. And I was in fifth grade. A proud member of the Big Blue Basketball Nation. Basketball game, UK, UNC, John Wall's year, 2009. His entire life. We were actually at that game. A life that was extremely altered exactly eight years ago. Eight years, it seems like it's a long time, but you know, I've done a lot in eight years that that I never thought I'd ever do. I, I wouldn't done if I could see. At age 19, Corporal Bradford was serving his country as a Marine in Iraq. The last image that I remember seeing when a roadside bomb was that white bag and them wires exploded underneath him. It sounded like a thousand gunshots going off at one time. The bomb claiming both legs and his eyesight. It was terrible what happened that day, but the last eight years have been the best best eight years of my life. These people took care of me. These people kept me alive and helped out. One thing with it didn't claim was his spirit. I live my life in the moment because you never know where that next step is going to be or what tomorrow is going to hold if it's even going to be here. Since returning home from Iraq, Matt Bradford has been working on a bucket list that's impressive by any standard. They're skydiving, competing in four Marine Corps half marathons, 
sharing the stage with Toby Keith, becoming the first ever blind double amputee to re-enlist in the service, marrying his wife, and being a dad. He's even finishing his degree at UK and rubbing shoulders with some of his favorite wildcats. The bucket list is getting a lot shorter. This is where you can find him on most game days. Oh, is he ever red hot? Hanging on every word. to the free throw line. But on the night when Kentucky hosted Missouri, it was Bradford's turn to hear the roar of Rupp Arena firsthand. I think I was more nervous on Rupp Arena than I was in a firefight. <laughs> All 23,000 cheering for him. It means a lot, you know, to go somewhere and somebody to walk up and say thank you for your service and shake your hand. For all the veterans that are in Rupp Arena tonight, please stand up and give them a motivation for making this the greatest country in the world and for us to be free and enjoy the basketball night. I guess he can now check that off his bucket list. Lee K. Howard, WKYT. Now, what a great message he has. Corporal Bradford says he has four semesters to go before earning his college degree in journalism with a minor in history. We have an update tonight on a WKYT investigation into some controversial guardrails. In November, we told you about the ET Plus guardrails used along many Kentucky roads. Some claim the guardrails cause serious injuries by slicing through vehicles during crashes. The Transportation Cabinet says there are hundreds of these guardrails, but they don't know where they are. We've now learned the guardrails have passed the first of four government mandated crash tests. Kentucky has temporarily banned installation of these guardrails. A meeting today in Frankfurt focusing on ways to prevent bullying in Kentucky schools. Some say it's an epidemic. The 22 members of the Youth Bullying Prevention Task Force are interviewing school professionals, bullying victims, and other experts. State educators on the panel say bullying in schools is a growing problem. Bullying is still pervasive, but in today's climate, cyberbullying is even more prevalent across our Kentucky schools and a lot of that happens outside of the school day and we see also adult and community bullying issues that we need to address also. This task force will continue to hold monthly meetings until they present their findings to the governor this fall.